just two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Yeah, I think we got to prepare like he's going to play. Um, I, I do have a lot of respect for Case and, and know that the offense won't change all that much schematically um, if it ends up being Case, but um, this guy's one of the best players in our league and, you know, speaking about Josh Allen and, um, you know, on our side of the ball, we get some times and we've had a few times this year where we've had some crossover tapes, so I've gotten to see just some of his performances and uh, what he's able to do on a football field and how he affects the game. I mean, it is very, very impressive to watch and, and a heck of a challenge defensively to try to, you know, you're never going to limit his impact on the game, especially with the skill players they have and the scheme they have. I think Ken does a really good job. Okay, Kevin O'Connell might have hit on one of my favorite, most ridiculous NFL head coach statements right there, which is when there's any there's any doubt over who might start the game. Okay, it could be uh, it could be John Elway in his prime or random backup slappy guy. It could be it could be Peyton Manning in his prime or one of those Wisconsin quarterbacks that sat behind him with a clipboard for a bunch of years, right? <laughs> And the coaches always come out and say, "Well, regardless of who's playing quarterback, uh, the scheme shouldn't really change much. We're gonna we're gonna prepare the same as we would if between Josh Allen and Case Keenum, things won't really be much different between the two of them schematically and otherwise. And so we're gonna prepare the same way. <laughs> yep, yeah, no question about it. We are f- afraid of Case. Totally the same. This yes, is, we are m- mortified. We are very scared of Case Keenum." Uh, well, we maybe should be just because it might be his revenge revenge game that he's been sitting on for like five years against the franchise. But this is Mackie and Judd, where we're gonna we're gonna bring you feedback Friday here. Dive into the comment section and uh, go ahead, Judd. Don't for, don't forget. No, no, Case Keenum, Case Keenum, 2019 Thursday and night game him. at U.S. Bank Stadium started and lost yeah. to Kirk Cousins. He didn't have this weaponry though with him. Okay, I'm Case just saying. Keenum driving got, an actual car is different. He, he didn't got get his, his chance. chance. Judd, is, Judd is right technically. And, and he lost. Doesn't he? Doesn't scare me. You know what? O- O'Connell should have said. But he hasn't got his revenge yet, so he's still waiting for revenge. It's another chance. O'Connell of should have said, "Man, if we don't get Josh, have we dodged another bullet?" You know how fortunate we've gotten when it comes to backup slappies. These guys are all crap. I mean, yeah. Case Keenum, bring them on. That's what you wanted. Uh, I I want Josh Allen. No, no, you wanted uh, KOC to say that though. Which oh, is, I got you. Yeah, if it's yeah. Case Keenum, who can? Yeah, you know what? We're taking the week off. It'd be hilarious if coaches were just honest. And honestly, uh, we do kind of want to get a healthy Josh Allen to sort of see where we are litmus test wise. But let's be honest, guys. If Case Keenum starts, that guy's pretty much screwed. Zero chance he gets away from Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter. So uh, good luck to the Bills if they do start Case Keenum. We're looking forward to putting an ass beating on them. <laughs> Thanks for the questions. I'm going back to practice. Yeah. Or you know what? I've been in the bar all, all week. I just had a kid. I'm celebrating. I haven't even watched our team. Have, have you guys seen our players? Yeah. I haven't watched film yet uh, of really anything. So, yeah. Anyhow. All right. Feedback Friday here where we take all your comments, questions, concerns, critiques, put them in a, in a stew here and get to as many of them as possible. So let's stay on KOC. Brian Koser says, why do you guys have a hard time just admitting that Zimmer was the problem? You try to say Kirk is now the quarterback you wanted him to be, but Zimmer was the reason he couldn't be. Diggs wanted out a few years ago, and I don't think it was because of Kirk. First of all, my I think our entire conversation dates back to 2014. Oh if no, I'm the not. leaf blowers are back. The le- oh, he's back. I the thought leaf he was done. Are back. Wow. Juan, Juan must know when I start again because he's fired it up, but you know what? The yard's going to be clean. It's going to be in- immaculate. And Juan, if you would like to advertise on Score North, I'm the guy to come to. Um, <laughs> so here's the here's the Zimmer thing. I agree from 2018 on with Kirk, it didn't work. Which, by the way, Mike had called in the combine time when he knew that they might sign Kirk. But we've always said, I think, Phil, that it's the 2014 to 2017 team. Like when there's this revisionist history that Mike sucked. You know, Mike Zimmer was the problem on this and that. He took this team from being defensively with, with, unfortunately, Frazier, who's now the D.C. in Buffalo, being a really bad team. And he took them defensively and propped them up and got them to, and I know they fell short and got embarrassed, but a conference championship game, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yes, if you want to talk about the 2018 on, Mike and Kirk 
didn't work well. It didn't work. And, and just to be clear, I can't absolve Kirk completely. Like, I love this whole thing of, what, well, Kirk was a victim of this and that. Kirk is a highly paid employee and a grown adult. So, but my entire Zimmer platform rests on the fact that pre-Kirk, BK, he did a really good job. And I think it's unfair to now go back and say, Mike was the whole problem and Mike sucked. Yeah. That, that's, that's, uh, that's going a step too far for a guy who for four years, I thought, brought this team a lot of success. And at that point, we loved the crusty Mike. Yes. There's a lot of, man, there's a lot to untangle here with this. And we've, we've done some of this the past 10 months, 12 months. But Zimmer was one of the best coaches in Vikings history, for sure, for the first five or six years. And then the rails, the, the wheels kind of came off the wagon in um, 2021, you know, 2020, I guess, during the pandemic. So at the end of his tenure, he was no longer the right guy to lead a Vikings team, especially one that was quarterbacked by Kirk Cousins. So Kevin O'Connell has come in, and he's just the perfect, like, football DNA match for this roster, exactly what they needed, exactly what Kirk needed. And so, yes, the change from Zimmer to Kevin O'Connell has really helped Kirk Cousins a lot. And that's a fact. It's I think it's helped everything more than I ever thought. I don't know that I thought this was going to be like a 13. I think at one point before the year, I told you guys, if everything goes right, this team could win like 12 or 13 games, but everything would have to go right. They're on pace to win 12 or 13, and not everything has come close to going right yet. They've had some good fortune the first part of the year. Uh, so I guess on one hand, you know, if you're going to pay – top three, top five money to the cap every year for a quarterback who's a grown man in his early 30s. You you, th you thought you were getting something better the first few years, a better leader, et cetera, and that's where the, largely where the criticism was. But finding that right match at head coach is drawing more of this stuff out, and so credit there as well. That's how I sort of untangle the web. And the one thing, too, is, is this, and O'Connell's a smart, young coach, there's no doubt, but keep in mind, we have said on this show, going back to the radio days, that the majority, the vast majority of coaches in all sports have a shelf life, right? And Mike's shelf life had expired. Um, that does not mean that Mike was a bad coach. But also, O'Connell, I think the biggest thing is this. He is the perfect, for at least 2022, antidote to Mike. He is the mm -hmm. opposite of Mike. He's He is, and players love this, Okay. But don't forget, too, and I don't mean to be a complete killjoy here, but Rocco's first year with the Twins was fantastic, too. The clubhouse culture was great. And it's not that Paul was bad, but but Rocco definitely brought something that we did a lot of segments talking about the Zen of Rocco and how well that, that worked. Fast forward to now, it's changed. So let's also appreciate the fact that the change from Mike to Kevin has worked perfectly, but that does not guarantee in three years that, that this culture is going to be great. It might be, we don't know, but that's an unknown. Tim Trail says, longtime Vikings fan from the 60s who still breaks out a Jim Marshall jersey for Vikings-Packers games at Lambeau. I still think we hit a home run with the hiring of Kevin O'Connell. His knowledge of the game, his personality and locker room motivational speeches, along with his play calling with very few hiccups, has been, for the most part, rock solid, on point. My question is, is it, too early to call Kevin O'Connell one of the best Vikings coaches ever. <laughs> uh, I don't well, know, Judd, do you think it's too early? Yeah, it's far too early. I don't know. It's far too early. I don't know. He's the best uh -huh. Vikings coach for 2022. That's very, very clear. <laughs> Mike, Zim on. Mike, Z Mike Zimmer is one of the best Vikings coaches of I all know. time. I know, but I mean, you Probably can't judge. the third best coach they've ever had. You can't judge a man on eight games. It's not fair to O'Connell. I love this question, though. Uh, I say if they beat the Bills, he's the second best Vikings coach of all time, regardless of what happens the rest of the way or the rest of his career. Uh, Jaden Shapp says, last week you guys mentioned a couple times that the Vikings offense probably won't look the way KOC ideally wants it until next year, which makes complete sense. But then you specifically talked about this from a roster perspective because this team, quote, isn't his chosen guys. But after the Hawkinson trade, what more could an offensive head coach want? This offense has been the most number of offensive weapons in the league with all pros at every level. What more could KOC want on the offensive side? 
You want the oh, answer to that man. question? Do these people just keep putting you a ball the on truth? a tee for you? <laughs> oh, no. Judd's camera's cutting out. Do you want the truth? Just as he's about it... to rip Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Judd, can you hear us? Are you still there? Back. Okay. Yes. You're back. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah, good. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, answer Jaden's question. I will not be silenced, Xfinity. I will not be silenced by you. <laughs> Even though you're trying. I don't know who bought you, but I will not be silenced. Um, you know, it's the quarterback. And, and this is not ripping Kirk. Kevin O'Connell is maximizing Kirk. And you know what? That's awesome for Kirk, and that's awesome for Kevin. But, I mean, let's be honest here. Kevin O'Connell's vision of a quarterback could be very different. Like, just because he's smart enough to maximize a guy doesn't mean that that guy's his guy. I, yeah, I mean, this I, is... this. I don't want to be negative about this, but y y we're talking about the quarterback. Well, yeah, I'll say this. He didn't necessarily choose Kirk Cousins out of, like, all of the possible quarterbacks in the world to work with. Kirk Cousins was under contract. There were some trade discussions, and he said, hell yeah, there's worse options than Kirk. He's one of the 15 best quarterbacks in the world. I can definitely make this work, and he is. But it does feel a little bit like an Andy Reid, Alex Smith situation in Kansas City where, hell yeah, I'm Andy freaking Reid. I'm one of the greatest offensive minds of the last 30 years in the NFL. You can do a lot worse than Alex Smith. He's one of the 15 best quarterbacks in the world. But after two, three years, maybe it's time. Maybe you hit that glass ceiling as a team. 10 wins, 12 wins, whatever. And you, or you, 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 know, you, you cap out in the playoffs. Who's the Patrick Mahomes? So that's what remains to be seen is, is Kirk riding to a new level here to where he's just going to be, he's going to be KOC's guy for the next three to five years and they're going to ride up in the sunset? Or is he the first guy, they win some games, hit a glass ceiling, and then he wants the dynamic young quarterback, right? That's the question. But he's doing a great job with Kirk and vice versa right now. So did Andy Reid and Alex Smith. But they had to make a tough decision at some point. Well played. Uh, so... All right, uh, Caleb Stansberry here says, want to know your guys' thoughts on KOC taking a lot of his coaching and time management from Bill Belichick from spending his time in New England in 2008. The move at the end of the commies game smelled like Bill Belichick to me. Yes. Riding out that clock down to 15 seconds, 12 seconds, talking about the middle eight, the importance of the last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the second. That's a, that's a Bill Belichick-ism. Maybe KOC did go to school in that one yep. year around Bill Belichick. Yeah, oh, I, I would even say did. that it it, it 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 seems like Kevin O'Connell um, just hasn't yet to make like a glaring coaching mistake. And I think he's seeing what he did against Washington last Sunday was also just very impressive because it it was I think it confused a lot of fans, right? Like when we were at first round, half the room was split of like, what are we doing? Why aren't you just getting the six? Why aren't you just getting the six right now and trusting that Taylor Heineke is not going to dagger you? No, it was a very smart decision. No, I will say uh, he's got, you know, seven, eight more games to play with, and his his decisions, good or bad, when it comes playoff time, are even going to be more magnified. So he so what he does in the playoffs is probably going to overshadow that great moment that happened in Washington to milk the clock. But I will say it's encouraging that he seems like he knows what he's doing in crucial and crunch time situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how we do it. I think there, the Judd? thing too is, am, am I back now? I can't tell. Let's I really put Judd in the tell. green room. There's if a you there's can like hear a three me. second. There's like a three second delay. Let's put Judd just restart. Let's put Judd in the green room. Um, <laughs> the lawn, um, the internet. Oh, it's just a dog. day, man. It's a day. All right, Charles. Charles Raymond says, "Any way you can assign a letter grade to the four front offices as they currently stand for the Vikings, Twins, Wolves, and Wild?" Ooh, uh, I'll go. Also, we'll start with the Vikings. I was since we're on this topic, I would give the the Vikings a solid B. B. I think a B is finally fine. I don't know if I can give an A. Uh, I don't know if it's been perfect, but I've liked that the savvy moves they made for Hawkinson. They've managed this cap pretty well. Um, I've, I've liked what they've done for the most part, but it, it's a little too early to tell, uh, from terms of them giving him an A. So I give him a B, uh, from Bill Guerin, I, I give it a B plus. I just think, and I give it a B plus and I give it a more of an upgrade from the Viking side of things 
because the salary cap situation is is just hurting them, and they're still figuring out ways to be buyers at the trade deadline six months ago. Um, they got their superstar signed. Uh, they're not giving a ridiculous amount of money to goaltenders, which is always something that other hockey teams do in a salary cap-oriented league. So yeah. they, they, have, they have managed to massage that cap um, as good as anyone. Uh, from the Twins... I'm going to give it a C minus. Um, you know, I, I respected them for actually going in at the trade deadline and trying to bolster the bullpen, uh, but they, their failure to address pitching um, really has hurt them. And had they signed Carlos Correa, they signed Josh Donaldson. That's great, but the, the, this team can't identify pitching. They can, they have not been able to either develop or acquire quality pitchers. So I, I give it a C minus. It could even be lower from your end, but I give it a C minus uh, from the Wolves. It's again. It's it's similar to Kwesi right now. It's a little too early to tell. I know the the Rudy Gobert trade doesn't necessarily. I understand why it could hurt them in the long run, but I respected them going after Rudy Gobert, and I, I really like that move. So I, I'll probably give them a B as well, just from the standpoint I need to see a little bit more. I'm gonna go Vikings B plus. A lot of really good things. Some some. I think we have to let the season play out just to see how the first season of Kwesi KOC ends. But right now it looks like a. Just a rock solid B plus with room for an A at the end of the season. Wild B plus for me. I love I love the fact that Bill Guerin came in and said, "All right, we're not going to deal with the Ryan Suter, Zach Parisi contracts anymore and uh, locker room culture. So we're just going to make a big change there, eat some cap space, uh, and uh, push forward with Kirill Kaprizov and some other young players." Yeah, Twins a D. They okay. just, I know they've made a couple big splash moves in the off season, but they've been. Well under 500 for two straight years now, mm-hmm. and they're they're just it's been six plus years and they can't find internal top end pitching, and uh, all the free agency whiffs that they have they've had over the years too. So they're a D for the Wolves. I would say incomplete. It has to be incomplete because we yeah, don't yeah it's gotta let this thing play out. So B plus Vikings, B plus Wild, D Twins, and Wolves are incomplete. All right, let's bring let's bring Judd back in here. See if the the gremlins are still Dudley. attacking him. I think they might be. I'll read this and we'll see if we can uh, we can muster up a response from Judd. So Richard Benson chimes in. I want to start again by taking full responsibility for hyping the Gopher football team so aggressively earlier this season when their record was four zero. We all naturally were crushed by their three game losing streak, and we basically washed our hands of them. Without trying to sell you any Gopher football stock, I will say it's always really fun to lay a, a, a W on Nebraska. And in my book, it would be a seriously successful season if we take down Iowa and Wisconsin. At any rate, I'm writing to encourage you guys to incorporate a gopher sports segment regularly on Mackie and Judd. P.J. Fleck is a more than decent coach. He fields a competitive product. I think Ben Johnson's capable of eventually recruiting a group of players to the U of M. And uh, the gopher hockey team is often one of the best in the nation. Should we do more gophers sports content on Mackie and Judd? Am I back? Yes. That's the yes. key question. You may be choppy. I, I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out as we go here. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we should do more gopher content if that's what the public wants. That's my feeling. Like, I think our, I think the great thing about doing this show is we can see just through the, uh, through the statistics of things, what pe- what people want. Unlike the old days with a four hour show where we were doing, you know, felt obligated twins, wild Vikings, blah, blah, blah. So um, I think if people want want gophers and they're good, like we try to do for football, we should do them. Uh, but I don't think that we should do them because we feel like we have to if people don't care. And gopher football, to be upfront about it, blew their chance. Yes, I totally agree. Even I mean, the, the, that's the, what even if they beat if they beat Iowa and Wisconsin, let's say they win out, and maybe they go to the Big Ten championship game. They still have kind of blown their, they kind of blew their chance to <laughs> maybe go to the playoff or go to the Rose Bowl or something. It's just, I don't know, man. It's hard to, and I get it. We, and like you said, we see some of the, we see what people are interested in. Yeah. And we just react to what you guys are interested in mostly. And you're not okay. really interested in Gophers or the Twins. And if Gopher, fact. if Gopher men's basketball gets good, we will do a ton on them. Like they're huge in this town. Gopher hockey. As much as I love love the sport, is a very niche. It's never yeah. going to be. Uh, you guys got to do more. But if Gopher men's basketball consistently makes runs, we will do plenty of Gopher men's basketball. 
I'll tell you what, the University of St. Thomas is Division I now, and they have a trio of big games this weekend on campus. The New Look men's basketball team opens their home schedule Friday night against Chicago State, 7 p.m. The women play South Carolina State on Saturday night at 7 p.m., and the Gopher football team can clinch a share of the Pioneer League Championship on Saturday, 12 noon, against Stetson on 1500 ESPN Radio. Support the Tommies, tommysports.com to get tickets, tommysports.com. Dot com to get tickets. Uh, it's time now here before we get to more Vikings feedback for the Minnesota goodbye. Uh, Declan always running into Larry David like situations in his oh, life. God. I really am. I really am. A, a happy Veterans Day, by the way, too. Uh, I have two siblings in the military, so happy Veterans Day to them. I saw the Larry David clip uh, just saying, hi, how you doing, instead of thanking a veteran, and it made me just chuckle because only him, only Larry David himself could pull something off like that. Um, my Minnesota goodbye. All right, so... As you know, I, I'm, I'm engaged now for over a week. We have started some uh, pre-wedding planning already. We have ready, we have ready started wow. to, to, right to start, start going right in. I don't want to delay this. Um, I, I want to, I not want to get this over with, but I just, I don't want to kick the can down the road. Let Let's start, let's start going here. And we've gotten a lot of good advice. Um, even the maid of honor is a wedding planner herself, so we've gotten just great tips on what we should be looking at, what we should be doing, um, and the, and the main tip. Before we went to before you're gonna start touring venues, is you really need to get at least some semblance of a guest list because you can only tour so many venues, and they're gonna ask, the main question they're gonna ask is how many people are you inviting, right? So this past Monday, her and I started a spreadsheet, like a Google Doc spreadsheet oh, of, of both of our this. stuff, <laughs> and and I have uh, so I was. I was told from so both these are sides. Like names on a spreadsheet that you're names that on a spreadsheet. You are deciding essentially, in some cases, who you will remain in contact with the rest of your life and not. Kind of. Just gonna, just, agree, gonna, yes. just gonna put that pressure out small there. Small list. Make the list yeah. really small then. So I was told right family first. Figure out family first, then make a friends tab, right? Like start with family and go from there. So she makes her side. I make my side. I'm with I add all these aunts and uncles and you know cousins no. and this stuff. I have dead parents, so that part is kind of easy, but also it really isn't because I still have other people in my life. And my dad's side was a lot more complicated uh, for that who I'm attached with from my dad's side. Um, so I, I made that list. I made the internal family list here, okay? And then what I did was I had my sisters go into the Google Doc and say, which of these people are on the chopping block. Which of these people should I not send a formal invite? Who wow. wouldn't be offended if I did not send a formal invite in? And they went in and they highlighted probably like 25% of the family list is saying, I don't think you need to invite these people. Like, I don't think they'll be offended. Also, at the end of the day, it is your They way. will be offended, by the way. Yeah, they, 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 will, they will be. I know. I, I was I was, I was, was holding that detail out because I was like, well, they will be offended. But whatever. It is, it is still my wedding day and whatever. So that's okay. So I did that. I, I I saw the highlights. Um, I'm filling out my list. She's filling out her list. And we're still like at a pretty ridiculously high number. And I'm just like, crap. Like, what are like, this is a lot of people. Like, this is even with the trimming. I was like, this is a Dude, significant amount of people. Here's about once you get beyond like 15 or 20 people, like your closest circle, the list immediately bloats to like 100 or 150. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. Because like the next tier of people are, it's a, it's a very wide tier of people. Yes. And so it, what are you going to do? So, <clears throat> well, I, I'm, I don't know yet. I actually, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with the people I'm, I, I, and what I keep doing is I, I'm laying in bed at some nights and I'm thinking about the list and then I'm like, oh crap, this person. Oh crap, this person. Like I keep forgetting about like a few people that pop in my head being like, oh God, like they should probably be, I, I probably should send an invite there. Um, but actually my, my, my dilemma I'm having here. Kind of if I bring it back to my sister who went in and like highlighted all these lists, all, all, all highlighted all these people to remove from the list. And she makes this analogy to me that she said, well, it's kind of like an NFL training camp roster, right? You got, you got 75 players and she tells me her exact words are, yeah. she literally goes, you have to get it from 75 to that 55 number. Yeah. And I, I, me being the little brother that's mansplaining goes, well, I mean, it is technically a 53 man active roster. Right. And she goes, well, I actually watch a lot of hard knocks and it's technically 55 because you can elevate two players up to the 53. <laughs> she checked for, you. Good for her. And then I, right. 
And and now I, Football. because I'm offended that my like knowledge of sports has been questioned by someone who is not involved in my profession, said like, well, the active roster remains a 53 man roster. That part is true. It is an well, active 53 man so roster. You argue That's this? what it is. Yes, the I game argue day this. The active roster is less than that, though, right? Isn't the game true? And I explain well, that too. Hold on a you second. You should have here. a practice squad of alternates that you've yeah. got like eight practice squatters that if someone gets sick with COVID or something on, you know, Tuesday night. Okay. Declan, you're <laughs> screwing this up from the start. First of all, your parents are dead. Don't start with family. Start with friends. That list, I, I don't care what what your fiance does. Your list should start with friends because family can be offended, but do you care? And the second thing is, Mom and dad being gone means that that it's not that you always have the excuse of, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But with mom and dad gone, this process was more di difficult. Yeah. You have the out. You got to start. You can blame. You can blame. You can. Yes, you can gaslight you gotta, people. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, you know, mom and dad. Still dealing oh my, with trauma. Yeah. Oh, no. But, but, I, but, but I mean, it's, it's, when they say, you know what, Declan, I am your third aunt or something like that. And I'm really disappointed I that I didn't beloved, get to go. Do you know what uh, you say? <laughs> Do you know what you say? You say, yeah, you know, Charlotte, but with mom gone, it was just so difficult to make this list. With mom gone. You always got to start it with mom gone. So when you start it with mom gone, <laughs> your friends are more of a problem because you've got a lot. And that's where the rubber meets the road. I don't even want you to think about family. Don't even think about them. Get to them. Tell your sister, do it for me. Give me whatever. Pick, them, pick a number and you tell your sister who do you think that we, we should invite? And if we don't do this right, I'm blaming mom okay. and dad being dead. I have a question. Let's say, so you've got your 53, 55 man roster. It's baseball. But then, but the then, 40 you, but man. then, but then you have your like leadership right. cabinet of the roster. Yep. Okay. Let's say I, let's say I made you just on your list of the 12 people that are just like ride or die have to be at the wedding. You're going to mm -hmm. elope now, and you can only invite 12 people. Yeah. How many of those 12 people are family? Is it all 12, uh, or are some well, of them friends? So that, well, like, I have, like, 12 of, of siblings, nephews, cut, like, like the immediate, I, I include the nephews in that, in that bunch to me. Uncle Declan's a very sacred character, okay? So they're, they're, they're part of it to me. And that's, that's, like, already 15 if I include all the kids. Mm-hmm. With their spouses and you know okay. all that stuff, so um, yeah, I'm, this uh, is you guys. You guys might want to just elope. Yeah, just don't invite anyone. Okay, can you do the thing where where you split this into threes, the service, you know, where you invite them, and that's the, oh. you know, and then the second thing is like yeah. it, so so basically your last list is come and get drunk but you don't have to see and bring a gift but you don't have to go through <laughs> any of the formalities yeah can and then the third like category you, third category is just like a nice facebook post and they can like it yeah um so can we i do will that? say what what we do we don't want to do what judd thinks i want everything to happen in the same place there's no there's no we're not doing a catholic wedding like I, I want the wedding i want the ceremony i want the reception everything in the same barn if you will so i i don't i don't want to i don't want to go anywhere else i always loathe that fact where you have to go somewhere and then there's also that awkward like 90 minute stretch between yeah that's that, that's the, called the go to ceremony three different reception. bars it's called yeah. bar hopping that's time, when you're getting maybe. drunk but i think yeah. to me i think i find that rude i find i find i find sure that is. Even, as a wedding guest rude as someone who's even been a part of that, as part on both sides, someone that's been in weddings and has done that, and as someone who was just a guest at a wedding, that there's just this 90 minute awkward period where the two most important people just aren't here. I yeah. find that I find that to be kind of strange. So we won't be doing that. Like that. I that enjoy is all the halftime for one. I, it's, I, it's not strange though, dude. It's your day. Yeah. If you're ever going to be selfish, that this is the day to be. Well, yeah, I understand Selfish that. and do your thing. Also, I, what I worry about here is that you're going to spend so much time trying not to offend people yeah. as opposed to just, like, planning an awesome day for you. And this is why you know, everyone does it differently. We literally went to Arizona and had nine people, and it was – I mean, for us, it, it was great. It was great. Right. And I don't know. There was probably 100, 100 people that were offended and left out or whatever. Yeah, but I was, I was very it's offended. What, it's I, what, I was what very we happy. wanted to do. Thank you for um, doing that. <laughs> yes. But, yes, it, it is, It is like, just looking – I'm looking at the list right now, and it's just like – it's a lot. It's a lot of people. Post the list online. Let's crowdsource it.
put descriptions of each person and let's put it out okay. there. Purple Daily and Mackie and Judd audience. Just to be very Help clear. Help Declan cut this list. Just to be very clear here, though, I'm not joking. Start with your friends. Give your sister the list of family and, and let her chop it. And then if you have some offended folks say, with mom and dad gone, it was just so difficult to make this list. Yes. You got to use the fact that you're a young man without parents to your advantage. You can do it with the yeah. food too. Uh, listen, uh, looks like there's a chicken and a salmon <laughs> option. I'm allergic to salmon, and I uh, and I don't eat uh, meat. Ooh, and so, is there a ooh, vegetarian that's... option? You can say, "Oh, it's just that's an oversight. I'm still dealing with the loss of my loss parents." Of my parents, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, my parents. I feel like you need to use this to your advantage fully. Okay. Th this might be just a weekly update. There might be a Friday weekly. What's De what's Declan's wedding planning dilemma that he is facing this week? Agreed. This could be a, a, a running gag. This I felt like gag. I felt like when I I met her for the first time on Sunday, your gal was not thrilled with my ideas, and I feel like I bring a lot to the table here. Well, because your ideas kind of stunk. I mean, like I, Phil, Phil and I were even talking about that. Your ideas, we gotta we gotta kind of talk about those those ideas. Which ones did you like? John, I think, you I think you should make a list of your top five pieces of advice for Declan. We can go over it next week. I just gave him Friday. some key advice. Oh, well, write them down. Put okay. them on paper. We can put it out on social media. I got too, my Bally's thing. Okay. The, ten, the 10 keys to a good Bally's broadcast. That too. You have two lists to work on. <laughs> Bally Sports North broadcast. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So good luck to Declan. We'll get another update sometime soon.